Hey everyone, so in today's video, I'm going to be covering the SoxProspects.com update. SoxProspects is, in my opinion, and a lot of people's opinions, the leading forum for Red Sox prospects. You even have like national writers that will go to Sox Prospects to get some of their information. So it's a really amazing resource. They have their own scouts that kind of deal with going out and taking a look at um, minor league baseball games. So they're not just like watching them on TV. They are like going out there, talking to the players, conducting interviews, doing a bunch of stuff. Sox Prospects is just an awesome resource. And they just updated their prospects list from the 2024 MLB draft. So I thought this might be kind of interesting to go through because there are some pretty big moves in this one. So um, I came out with an edited prospect video uh, earlier this week, but um, uh, this is going to be a little bit different than that. This is just going to be kind of straight up talking about these guys and how I feel about some of them. And so, yeah, we're just going to we're going to start at the beginning. We're going to go top to bottom and um, we'll see where it goes. So uh, first off, we got Roman Anthony, um, Marcelo Meyer, Kyle Teal, Kyle Teal. Um, all three of these guys, they haven't really moved positions since the start of this year, and they're the big three for a reason. Like all of them are going to be average to above average major league players. You get the like Kyle Tucker type comp for Roman Anthony, um, which obviously Tucker has been like a top ten MVP candidate. He's he's placed top ten in MVP multiple times already, and he's you know a guy that'll bat like in the two fifty to two seventy range with thirty home runs and. You know 20 to 30 stolen bases and i mean if, if that's what we're getting out of roman anthony if that's a reasonable comp that's awesome um marcella meyer you know he's got like the Corey seager type comps but i don't think he really has as much power as seager right now but he has basically everything else that you could kind of want from him um and if we get something that's even close to what a Corey seager provides from marcella meyer um that's pretty good um Pretty, pretty good. Keith Law recently put in that he was the number two prospect in all of baseball behind Jackson Holiday during his most recent update. So um, while Mayer may be number two in the system according to Sox prospects, you know, Keith Law views him as number two in all of baseball. And so um, yeah, everybody's not going to be quite the same, but um, this is a really good indication that there is going to be some pedigree and some actual performance from this type of guy when he actually promotes so kyle teagle kyle teal is a guy that i'm really excited about i think he's gonna be like adley rushman honestly i think he's gonna be that type of impact when it comes to um players that promote and for the red sox who haven't really had like a solid catcher in a while we had christian vasquez i, I guess that's really good and um i don't even know what i'm talking about you know we have connor wong who's doing very well right now but um, we haven't had a guy who's like been that you know, consistent all-star since really Veritech is, I guess, what I'm more trying to say. Um, Wong is doing fantastic this season, but is he going to be able to keep that up? You know, we're not sure. He made some tweaks this year, and this year he's obviously uh, doing fantastic, but it's just something that you'd like to have multiple seasons of consistency before you can be like, okay, this is that type of player, you know what I mean? Um, first interesting one, actually, on this, Braden Montgomery debuts at number four so he was the 12th overall pick by the red sox and he was a guy that was you know some people had him projected to go in the top five or even top three before the season started but he hurt himself in the playoffs just a few months ago if, if you didn't notice he was in a walking boot um he really wasn't supposed to be walking but he was in a walking boot when he got drafted uh that was only like a month and a half after he broke his foot so you know but uh he's a guy that's it's really really fortunate the red sox were able to draft him they got kyle teal last year um they were able to snag roman anthony the year before with an over slot bonus he was projected to potentially be a first round draft pick they got him in the second round and they got Braden montgomery this year so this is three straight years that the red sox have been able to draft like a top prospect and they've been able to kind of like sneakily do it um so Mon montgomery's uh, we're going to have to see how it goes, but a lot of people are telling me that he could be somebody that's, you know, a top prospect in all of baseball. He's debuting on a lot of people's lists, like inside the top 50 MLB prospects, which from a 12th overall pick, like, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. So um, next up, we've got Christian Campbell. Uh, if you guys know anything about Red Sox prospects, he's really blown up this year. So uh, Campbell's, Campbell's stats here, like, uh, I guess I probably should be going into this a little bit more, but... You got Campbell here, and like these are kind of outrageous stats here: four home runs, twelve stolen bases, 
377 average, a 1030 OPS. And this was after he promoted to. So he's got 12 home runs this year. He's got a little bit of pop, a little bit of everything, a little bit of speed. Um, he's not striking out very much, which this is this right here. This is probably the most important thing for me. If you look at what he was doing in Greenville, um, the walks are about the same uh first you know a similar amount of plate appearances but look at these strikeouts like 47 like you're striking out 33 percent of the time that's a lot that's a lot of strikeouts here um and then he gets into portland and he's striking out like 20 percent of the time and so he's promoting and he's striking out less he's making a lot more contact and so i know there's a lot to be made out of you know his batted balls and play is really high so like his batting average he's not gonna bat 380 he's not that type of player but He's not striking out a lot, and he's still walking at a good clip. And if you have a guy that doesn't strike out a lot and walks at a good clip and can hit the ball, that's a recipe for success when you're talking about prospects. So um, Campbell's pretty special. I, I I was on his hype train pretty early in the year, so I, I feel like I, I have to mention that. Um, because if I don't, I'm, I'm not giving myself the credit that I definitely deserve. <laughs> um Oh, I just logged all the way out of that. Um, I guess I got another page right here. Well, that was pretty convenient. But <laughs> so Campbell's going to be really good. Uh, another guy that's almost, I swear, outside of Sox prospects, everybody's forgetting about Miguel Blas, um, Miguel Blaze. And uh, it's because he really just hasn't like given you stats this year. Uh, he's just been hurt like <laughs> every single year. But this guy, people are forgetting. He's like... The most talented player in the Red Sox system. I mean, uh, people were comparing him to like Ronald Acuna Jr. and unironically comparing him to Acuna Jr. And when you ask him what he wants to be, he's like, "I model my game after Acuna." And so, if you look at him swing, um, let's see if I can do that really quick. Gosh, I'll try to pull this up for you. So, if you look at him swing, he actually kind of has uh, an Acuna. I swing to him, and if you're talking about a guy who um, is claiming that he's like Acuna, and he is... Uh, Morris deals the three... Oh, let's see if I can get a better angle from this. That's not going to do it. Well, I'll show you this clip anyway, just to get something up on the screen. But if you're talking about a guy here who wants to model himself after Acuna, and... And he's hitting balls like this. I mean, I don't know. I I I feel pretty good about Miguel Blaze. I've I've been on his train for a long time. I've actually got I'm a big baseball card guy. Oh hey, funny. Look right there. That is my uh, baseball card channel. In case you guys didn't know, I have a baseball card channel that I never update ever. But these are some of my baseball cards. That is really weird that that's just right there. Maybe not as weird as I think. I'm sure it's catered to my preferences and all that stuff. But Anyway, um, let's go back over to this page. But uh, he's the type of guy that he's like a 2020, 30, 30 peak potential type guy. Like um, Miguel Blaise is, is not somebody to be forgotten about. And he's finally starting to hit a little bit. Um, he needs to cut down on strikeouts a little bit more. Um, he needs to just perform a little bit better. Um, but let's not forget about him. And I, I, I think he's very deserving to be up in this you know, top six, seven prospects list. And he's, he's been kind of floating around here, and I'm actually fairly surprised that they've been able to keep him here considering all these other prospects that are coming up that we'll talk about in just a second. But Miguel Blaise, just don't don't forget about this guy. He's going to perform. Uh, Luis Morales, he's out for the year. Um, sucks because this is a guy that, like, he was in Portland, but he probably, with how he was performing, he's going to potentially be in AAA by the end of the year. And, um... <sighs> Man, it just stinks. He he's he's like a legit potential starting prospect for us. Like he's definitely the best starting pitcher in the in the system. Um, we'll have to see what he does next year when he comes back from injury. But uh, he's a good one. He's definitely a good one. Uh, Franklin Arias. This is this is the guy I was kind of waiting to talk about in this video. But um, Arias is a guy that potentially could be like the number one overall prospect in the system by the end of next year. And the reason I say this specifically is because uh, you expect Roman Anthony, Marcelo Mayer, and Kyle Teal to all graduate. Um, Campbell's a candidate to be like that number one prospect. Brady Montgomery is obviously a candidate to be that. Um, but Franklin Arias, I think he's got the 
maybe the best clear line to be able to do this because one he's been tearing the cover off the ball lately like these stats right here this is not a good indication on like what he's actually been able to do like take a, take a look at like these stats real quick so this is what he was able to do in the Florida Coast uh, League. This is like a developmental league. It's like before you get to the actual minor leagues, this is what you have. And um, he just destroyed the ball. And if, uh, Peter Gammons recently reported that if he was in the MLB draft this year, he would have been the first shortstop taken. And the first shortstop was taken number seven overall. And so if we are on the hype train about Braden Montgomery being drafted 12th overall and we're like man we we got a great one here Arias might be better than Montgomery already and so Sox prospects they have him ranked at number eight um which is probably fair for what he's been able to do this year he's still got more to prove um but this is the type of guy that's like a five tool talent and when we're talking about somebody who plays shortstop and they they play shortstop pretty well like that was that was how they got signed in the first place um they were a like above average defensive player with some bat potential that was essentially how he was signed not drafted um out of i think it was venezuela or the dominican republic here yeah venezuela um and so if, if he's somebody that you already started off with good defensive ability and now he's developing the hit tool those are the prospects that are so exciting because you know that they're going to at least be a good defensive player for you and when they develop those hit tools that's where it's like okay now you've got something here so um next up we have got you all in suspetus so these guys were signed at the same time suspetus was out of the dominican republic that i was getting those two confused um and suspetus is essentially like everything that you could want um from a prospect and he was the number one uh, signee for the red sox when they picked him up um last season and they signed him and he was doing everything well and until he got hurt like this like there's a reason that he got into the top 10 prospects very fast this year and i uh, this kid's young like both these kids like they're both 18 years old and you look at them they're they both could be in double a by next year and 19 years old like end of the season they both could be in double a and they're in low a Zalem right now so or i guess it's just regular they don't have low a anymore but um so they'll have to go up through greenville and then i i genuinely think that you know arias might be somebody who starts in greenville next year if he can you know pick it up a little bit um but it's just they're incredibly impressive prospects these are both guys that could be the number one overall prospect by the end of next season david sandlin uh, we picked up this guy in the trade for john schreiber and that's just a killer trade schreiber is pitching okay um but sandlin here he's like our best pitching prospect who's still functioning <laughs> right now and so we we gave up schreiber and he had like three or four years of control so we were able to get a little bit better prospect for him um but this guy's just just dominating so this this 512 era this isn't a very good indication as to like what they are and you, and you kind of have to take some of these stats the grain of salt when they're in the minor leagues <clears throat> for a couple reasons one they're still working on things and two um some of the offensive environments in these leagues they don't they don't they aren't consistent um like some of them they'll score like six seven runs a game like per team and so if some guy has like a four era in one of these leagues it's like okay well that's actually not too bad um so era is not the best indication what i always like to look at is innings pitched and then strikeouts to walk and if you have good metrics when it comes to this like he's a little bit high when it comes to walks right now but look at these strikeouts 50 strikeouts and 31 innings pitched that's crazy high number i mean we're talking a lot like he's getting hit by the long ball here um, but he's going after hitters, and I think if he can just kind of develop some more of those like secondary type pitches, um, to be able to not just rely on his fastball that's a hundred miles an hour, um, it's gonna be it's gonna be he's gonna be really good. Like he's gonna be really good. He this is a total steal. This is a guy that's like a mid to upper rotation potential guy. Um, like if he, if he came in and you you were getting like an Eduardo Rodriguez type um performance out of him like you take that every single day of the week but that's kind of where i feel like he's at right now but he's also a guy that has like number one overall potential like um or number two like like um there's there's a lot to like about this he's got good build and when a guy is a starting pitcher and he's throwing in the upper 90s up to 100 miles an hour 
that's that's a scary player to face when you're an opposing batter. Um, all right, Chase Meadroff. Um, I covered this guy in my last video. This guy is like my favorite prospect in all of minor league baseball. He strikes out less than anybody in baseball and he walks more than almost anybody in baseball the only person who walks more than him in major league baseball this season would be juan soto the only two people who strike out less than him in major league baseball this season would be stephen kwan and Luis rise kwan is batting 333 and Luis rise has won two straight batting titles so this is a guy that could be a 300 hitter in the major leagues and have the best walk rate in the league so if you have somebody who say they're batting 300 and they have a 420 on base percentage or something like that can you even imagine what that type of guy would do like in the major leagues even he doesn't have very much power that's that's his biggest thing like he might hit 10 home runs a year like in his best type seasons but like if you got a guy who's got a 420 on base percentage and they got like close to an 800 OPS and they're just they're, they're causing havoc at the top of your lineup every single time like could you imagine somebody like that with Jaron Duran like back to back and then you got like Rafael Devers and Tristan Casas right afterwards like I hope his bat develops because he's not very fast he doesn't have very much power and his arm is pretty weak defensively he's pretty solid but when you can't throw very hard it limits your versatility so Really, he's just a second baseman right now. He might try to move and work into other positions. I, I hear he's not too bad at third base, but I'm really excited about Midra. I think he's super undervalued. And, um, yeah. Alan Castro is a guy who's kind of blown up this year. Um, some people are kind of high on him. His on-base percentage is something that's really sexy. Um, and he's a guy that really just hasn't, like, hit very much in the past. And now he's hitting all of a sudden. Like, uh, I know these numbers right here. They don't like wow you when you look at them you know a 243 average isn't great but this guy was batting like under 200 for most of the year but this is this is what you really want to be looking at though like look at these previous seasons so we got 2022 here he had three home runs between 2022 and 2023 he had seven home runs um 2024 he's got 13 already and a lot of these have come in the last month like he's got i think he's got like six or seven home runs just in the last month alone and so if you have a guy who's walking pretty good amount you have a guy who's got a little bit of power um can take a couple of bases he's not super fast but you know he might give you 10 or 15 stolen bases um uh, you know that's, that's a guy that's kind of interesting a 25 home run bat 10 15 stolen bases can get on base a lot kind of feels a little bit like jd drew a little bit um i'm not saying that he's gonna be something like that like drew is super undervalued in my in my opinion in the time with the red sox but Alas, um, just a guy to kind of keep an eye on. I don't have a whole lot of other comments for him right now, but I like Alan Castro. We'll see what he does. Um, Nazan Zanatello, he's not doing great this year. <laughs> Gotta be honest, this, his cousin follows me on Twitter, which is kind of fun. Um, he always likes my stuff when I talk about him, but uh, he's just not doing well. This is for, for like a full season into him. Um, I, I can't remember if he was like a first or he was second round pick last year. This might be a miss, honestly. Like, this is the scary part to me. Um, he's, I mean, he's walking okay, but look at this strikeout rate. He's striking out 50% of the time in the minor leagues. 50. Um, this is a guy that worries me. I, I don't know. He's going to have to figure out how to not swing and miss at every other pitch that goes through. Like, um, if he's not able to do that, like, I mean, he's got a couple bombs here, whatever, but, like, He's not doing well. He doesn't have enough speed. His defense isn't that great. Um, this is a guy that, uh, if he doesn't sort it out, he might not even make the major leagues. And it's kind of a bummer because he seems like a really nice guy, but um, he has not shown very much this year. This is this is so far a miss, but we'll see. Um, Richard Fitz, Peyton Tolley. We'll go to Peyton Tolley first. Um, Tolley, second round draft pick. Pretty interesting. Um, he was kind of like a guy that was projected more to go like 100 overall i think and he was selected 50th overall so the red sox are picking up like toolsy type guys um he did pretty well in his last season but um this is what you need to look at here 125 strikeouts and 81 innings pitched um that's pretty good 13.83 even for college baseball this is a really really good number um strikeouts are a little bit more inflated in college baseball just because the skill set's a little bit more all over the place but um this k per nine rates really good and you know he's 
going to be sent into the system now, the Andrew Bailey pitching machine. So um, very toolsy guy, very big guy, has really elite extension. I remember that. Um, so like basically what that means is he, when he releases the ball, it's way closer to the plate than most other pitches. So, um, it makes it a lot harder for batters to pick up. And this is like, I think if I remember right, if he was in major league baseball this year, this extension would be like fourth in major league baseball right now. So if he can maintain that and figure out his skill set, like he doesn't need to develop as well as some other prospects just with that extension because it makes it more deceptive for hitters. So um, this is a guy that's super interesting. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to see how that works out. Uh, Richard Fitz, we picked him up in the trade with Alex Verdugo, and uh, he is inconsistent this year. He's in AAA, so he's had some really good starts. He's also had some really bad starts. Um, let's take a look at what he's done over the past year in Worcester. Worcester. I'm not from New England, guys, so I'm pronouncing this wrong. I'm sorry. Um, so, yeah, he, he's not striking out enough batters. It's not, he's walking too many. He's giving up too much hard contact. It's just not what you want to see from Richard Fitz. Um, I know he's still working through some stuff. And AAA, it's not easy. Um, but he had much better results if you look down here in AA last year with the Yankees. Like he was striking out more batters. He was walking fewer batters. That's kind of more where you want to be. I think that he's going to probably be in AAA again to start next season. And uh, he needs to he needs to make some improvements here. Uh, he's he's more like a mid to back end rotation potential starter, but he he's got a good fastball. So I mean, worst case, he's he's going to make the major leagues at some point. Like even if it's like a reliever, he will. But um, He's got a little bit of concerns right now, so we'll have to see how it is. Uh, Elmer Rodriguez. Um, so this is the type of guy who has really, really excelled in the past year. I I probably should have actually been covering him more in my prospects to watch video, but um, like look at these stats. Like like this is insane. Um, he has never not done well every single league that he's been in. Like he's never had an ERA above two point six. That's pretty good. Look at these strikeout rates. 73 and 61. That's pretty good. He's walking a little bit more than I'd like to, but he doesn't give up very many hints. Um, he's given up five home runs in his entire career, so <laughs> that ball's not going out of the ballpark. Um, I don't I, I don't know enough about him to give a strong opinion, to be honest. Um, but uh, emergency depth starter, I think he's, he's developing past that point and could be somebody who's an actual starting pitcher. But... We'll see on this. I, I would have more information for you if I actually had it, but I don't. So, um, Johan Friend Garcia. So, his brother um, is like actually right here. His brother is right here. So, it's kind of funny. Um, this is his older brother, um, and he's been like tearing the cover off the ball. But Johan Friend got hurt this year and is out for the year. But this is a guy that there are some people within the Red Sox organization that think he has um, a higher potential than Kyle Teal. And what, what I mean by that is like he could be he his peak potential is like one of the best catchers in major league baseball but like his floor is way lower than kyle teal so teal is a very safe prospect he's one of those guys that you know worst case situation he's going to be a solid major league player like at worst but uh johan friend he's one of those guys that like might not even you know do much at the big leagues at all if he doesn't perform well but he's like an all-star caliber um, and above type potential to him and uh, that's really exciting from him and, and people don't know enough about him and a big reason for that is because he's been hurt but like look at some of these numbers the past couple years like he really dominated the florida coast league last year and he came up and he was only 14 games in but um, everything that we were seeing out of him was really encouraging his strikeouts were a little bit higher than he wanted to be but he's still very young and figuring it out and he was super advanced for a catcher who catchers usually take a lot longer to develop it's not uncommon for them to you know debut in that 25 to 26 year old range and this kid's only 19 years old right now so like if he's in single a at the moment um this is one of those guys you'd look to potentially promoting and being like in double a um triple a when they're like 21 22 and that's 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 pretty crazy you don't see a lot of catchers do that so um next up we got mikey romero and he absolutely just tore the ever-living shit out of the ball <laughs> this last month like in july so i don't these stats aren't on the screen but i know them off the top of my head in july this last month he had 19 games played and he had 20 extra base hits 
20, 13 doubles, a triple, and six home runs in a month in 19 games. Like, could you imagine anybody in Major League Baseball um, having 20 extra base hits over 19 games? Literally more than one a game. They were getting at least a double or something, like a triple. They were at, he was basically averaging a triple. And so um, he's doing amazing right now. But the thing that still concerns me is he's not walking enough. Um, I don't... I get worried about prospects that don't walk enough. Um, a really good counter argument to that would be like Sadon Rafaela, who he doesn't walk a lot, but he's got like elite bat to ball skills. And so like you can see that improvement from him this whole season. Like he's batting two hundred for the first, you know, two months of the year, and now he's been batting like three hundred the past like two months. So um he's he's an interesting prospect. He was a first round draft pick, you know, in twenty twenty two and he played awful for a little while. Um, but he's battling injuries. Like, look at these games played in the first couple of years. Like, like he barely played at all. And this year he was hurt again. So he missed the first like month and a half of the season. But now that he's playing and he's gotten some reps under him, he's picking it up. So um, I'm excited to see what Mikey can do. Um, he's a guy that, you know, bat first middle infielder. Um, I covered him on one of my recent prospect videos, the one that's a little bit more edited than this one. Um, so if you guys are interested in learning more about him, Take a look at that, but he's he's got to watch. Um, Yostinson Garcia is how you pronounce this. Yostinson Garcia. <laughs> so um, this guy is really good. And when you watch him at... So here, I'm actually going to pull up this video that I have of him um, somewhere maybe. But he looks... And I, and I don't I don't mean to be like really aggressive on this, but he like looks like Manny Ramirez when he's batting. And it's partly just because of his hair, but I'm not going to try to spell this. Let me just copy and paste that. Um, but like look at some of these swings and how he takes this. Okay, let's get through the ad here. Take a look at this. This is crazy. Oh, what the... Look at this swing. This is actually from Sox Prospects. But doesn't that just kind of remind you of how Manny swings? Like, I don't know how he's going to turn out or anything, but I just I can't get away from seeing Manny Ramirez, especially with the dreadlocks that he's got. He's got 16 home runs now. 16 home runs that leads the greenville drive and he's only been there for like a month and a half less than two months like he's got 47 games in him and he he's got 16 home runs um i don't know what else to say really i mean his offensive potential is really high he needs to walk a little bit more he's striking out a tiny bit too much um but if you're hitting bombs at that rate this is the guy that's like if it, this was extrapolated over a full season, he'd have 40-plus home runs, which, that's crazy. He's already got 21 home runs this season in, like, 70 games. So, um, yeah, man, I mean, he's he's a really exciting prospect. I, I'm surprised at how well he's playing this year. Didn't see that coming. Kind of came out of nowhere, but you know, Stinson's a guy to watch out for. Hunter Dobbins, uh, this, is, this is, like... Clear cut case of this guy's gonna be a back end starting pitcher, in my opinion. Um, he just feels like every, every his progression has just been perfect to be like a like conventional number four starter in the rotation. So um he's been in the minor leagues for four years now. Um, this is his second full year in Portland. He will be in AAA by next season, just by how he's performed, but like he struggled a little bit in Salem and but they sent him up to Greenville and he had a really nice season in 23. So they promoted him up to Portland and he struggled a little bit, but now he's back in Portland this year and you know he's performing well. So it's like this pattern of just like adjustments when it comes to Hunter Dobbins. Um he's a guy that can throw hard and um he's got to still work on some of his secondary pitches, but his strikeout rate's fine. He's not he's not like a blazer or anything. I don't think he's the guy, type of guy that's going to necessarily strike out, you know, 11, 12 batters a game or anything. Um, but he doesn't give up a lot of contact here. And this is like the craziest stat of all when it comes to him. 82 point or 88.2 innings pitched, one home run allowed. That's insane. That's crazy. This is like if this guy was doing a full season, he'd give up like two home runs the entire year, at least if you'd extrapolate that out. I know that's not how it works, but 
um he's having a crazy good season of of like generating weaker contact and keeping balls in the ballpark um and so that's really nice to see I, i'm excited to see what's going to happen from him next year i think he's the type of guy that you look at dobbins and give him through 2025 you look at 2026 and he's a guy that's competing for a rotation spot. I think that there's not a question in my mind that this guy's at least going to be like a f- number four or five starter. Um, and he just he he feels right. He feels feels good. He's a guy that you want to keep in the organization as long as you can. Um, and I, I think that he's just he's a very good late development prospect. He'll probably be up around age 26, but um, I, I I like to see more of that from more prospects. Uh, welcome in Gonzalez. Uh, so he's completely tanked his value this year. Um, he was like between him and Perales were like our best prospects at the beginning of the year. And, uh, he's just not doing well. I mean, he's, this walk rate is scary to be honest. I mean, it's always been bad, but it's just, it's not improving at the rate that it needs to. And, um, if you're going to walk, you know, five batters per game, um, per nine innings, that's a problem. It's just, it's not going to develop. He's probably not going to be able to be a starting pitcher at this rate. Um, he's more than likely going to have to be a reliever. And I kind of look at him as like a Darwin's and Hernandez type reliever who, you know, he had some success for a couple years there, but at the end of the day, I just, I don't know if he's going to really develop into anything that we're going to be able to use at the major league level over the course of some time. Um, Zach Penroyd here. Um, He's had a weird year so far. He's not really doing very well on Worcester, but um, Portland, he had pretty good success. I th- I think... I don't think that he's going to be a starter either. I know he's trying to be a starter, but I'm just a little bit concerned over him. I think he has more potential to be kind of like a high-end reliever. I think he could be a high-end reliever because he throws hard enough and he's got you know some breaking pitches, so maybe like a 7th or 8th inning guy. I feel more confident about him than I do about Wickelman, but um, I, I I don't know. I, I think both of these guys are in that same type of boat. They're both going to be kind of reliever types. He's a late bloomer, like he's 27 already, um, but I don't know. He might not even be within the organization this next year because like if he's a potential free agent at the end of next year so um conrad Kaysen. so this is the guy that uh, the red sox picked up in the eighth round and they gave him third round money so this is nobody was drafting him because they didn't think he was going to sign nobody was expecting him to sign um he's a two-way player right now so they're going to actually try to develop him as a pitcher and shortstop and probably just see what sticks uh, most players obviously don't make the major leagues as a two-way player but um guy throws 98 miles an hour and he hits well as an offensive player. So if you have a guy who's doing both of these things and they're a prospect, why would you not (laughs) try to see how it goes? Um, I think that I'm pretty interested to see how it works out. Look at his, these are um, high school stats. They're kind of hard to like actually, you know, gauge what it is, but a 0.48 ERA with 99 strikeouts and 43 innings pitch. This is high school ball. This is like probably every good starting pitcher stat line, but it's still hard not to be like, that's pretty good. Um, and when it comes to his high school batting stats, like this is a pretty standard like batting line. So, um, but again, like people were projecting him to go like as a third round player. They didn't because they didn't think he was going to sign. Um, he was going to Mississippi State and the Red Sox drafted him and they were able to sign him because they paid him a crap ton of money. So hundred or 1.25 million in the eighth round when people are getting like 150 grand. So very, very sneaky, very, very sneaky. This is like a little coup when it comes to uh, Craig Breslow here in the front office. But if this works out, this was an amazing pick. Um, Connolly Early, this is a guy that I covered in my video as well. Uh, I think that this guy is a little bit undervalued right now. Um, I feel better about him than I do about Zach Penroyd and Wickman Gonzalez. Like, if you look at these stats, um, I know stats don't tell the whole story. There's a lot of scouting, but, like, I just feel a lot better about what I'm seeing. Like, at Greenville this year, he wasn't walking too many guys, and he's striking out a shit ton of players. Um, we're talking 3.72 ERA. ERA is not everything here. But like, he was limiting the damage, didn't give up a ton of home runs. Um, you can live with that for sure. And uh, he's he's a guy that I'm really interested to see how he develops. I think that this is another type of guy 
I actually put him more in that category of what we were seeing up here about like Hunter Dobbins. I know he's ranked a little bit lower than these these couple guys, but um, I think Early and Dobbins are probably the two most confident, like lower minor prospects that I feel like they're both in Portland right now, but um, lower ranked prospect that I feel like could actually be good pitchers. Um, Yordani Manegro is another one that I feel pretty solid about. He, I covered him in this video as well. Um, he has performed fairly well this year as well. Um, not as good as Connolly Early, but he's still doing okay. He's a little bit lower, so he's in Greenville at the moment. Um, but he's doing all right. I mean, he's striking out a good amount of batters. Again, you get you get a lot of these prospects, and it's, it's always the same thing. They strike out a lot of people, they walk more people than you want them to. And so it's really, are they going to be able to get past all of that? So you kind of throw him in the same boat as that. I don't feel as good about Manegro, but um, something that I really like about him is when you watch him pitch, he like he gets so energized about every single strikeout and every single pitch that he makes. Like he's very fun player to watch. So, um, blaze Jordan, blaze Jordan. Okay. So everybody knows about blaze Jordan. He was hitting 500 home, 500 foot home runs when he was like 13 years old, um, with a metal bat, but still very impressive. He is, I hate to say it almost like a non prospect at this point. Um, there's a lot of information on him, but to kind of just summarize all of this, um, he was drafted as a power corner infielder, right? Not a, not a great fielder, spine, whatever. Um, he basically changed his body type after he was drafted and tried to like become more athletic, which you know helps him in some ways. But he's lost a lot of power as a result of that, and so he's kind of become more of like a hit first type player. So like his hitting tool is better. So like if if what I mean by that is, at the start of this season, the projections would be like, hey, this guy would bat 280 with 15 home runs, which is fine. But like, if you're a corner infielder and you're only hitting 15 home runs and batting like 280, you're probably not going to be starting for most ball clubs because they're kind of looking for a little bit more power or some like really good defense. And he doesn't really have power or defense right now. And so this year, guy with no power and no defense, and he's not hitting anymore, and he's not getting on base. So basically, he's having a really, really bad year um, for what we need to see from Blaze Jordan. And he's almost like a non-prospect at this point, is kind of what I'm saying. Um, I hate to say that because, you know, he's a very interesting guy. And um, every interview that I've seen, he seems very hardworking. But um, I just... He needs to he needs to figure himself out this offseason. I think he really needs to reset his mind. I really think he's in his own head because people have been talking about him for so long. Um, can he figure it out? Sure. I mean, yeah, I think so. But I, he's a season away from, you know, potentially basically being a non-factor when it comes to prospects. Um, Juan Valera, don't know enough about him. Got to be honest. I really don't. Um, signed for $45,000 last year. So, I mean, that's crazy. This guy's $45,000 last year. Um, that's basically like no money. Like <laughs> he was like a non-prospect when he was signed. But look at these stats at the Florida Coast League. Uh, he's got one, two games in eight innings pitched. Wow. And Salem. Man, I should, I need to be paying more attention to this guy. Holy crap. Wow. These are some good stats, guys. 401 OPS. Holy moly. He hasn't given up a home run in professional, in professional baseball yet. Huh? Okay, yeah, he's striking out a lot of good batters. He's walking at an okay rate, not giving up any hits, no home runs. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I gotta say, I, I've I've heard of him obviously, but I really haven't looked into him very much because you know he's only been here a year and he hasn't done a whole lot. But um, the report's very vague on him too. Interesting. Interesting. I don't know enough about Juan Valera, but they've moved him up from being not ranked to number twenty-seven. So I guess that's saying something. Jedickson Paez, um, I've heard about him a little bit. Uh, he was, yeah, he was signed a, a while ago now, and he's been kind of just like moving up steadily. Um, another one of those guys that's kind of interesting. The th the thing that I'm not sure about is I don't know if he's going to strike out enough people, um, but he doesn't walk anybody, so that's great. And again, I've, I've said that a couple times in this video. Walks and strikeouts is, is what I like to see. And so if he's not walking very many people, which he's, he never walks anybody, like this is, these are crazy good numbers actually for a young player. Um, this is really encouraging. And 
Let's see here. He rule five draft el eligible next year. So he's probably gonna be in double A. This is an interesting guy. He's gonna have a he needs to he needs to figure out either have a really good year or really not amazing year next year, or else the Red Sox are probably gonna have to put him on the 40-man roster or trade him because he's in kind of one of those in-between years where his development's been slow but good. And um if he's sitting like, you know, in double A or just got into triple A at December next year. Um, some team probably will take a flyer on him because just because that walk rate's so low. Um, Hayden Mullins, uh, he has picked it up a little bit. He's kind of, I think he's a reliever, if I remember right. And he's a starter. Okay. Again, one of those guys, he just strikes out a ton of people. He walks too many guys. Uh, he's, in, he's in that general pool of guys that you just kind of wait and see on. Um, yeah, so ceiling of a middle reliever, I think that that's... I don't I, I don't think Mullins is kind of in that category that like early or Hunter Dobbins is, but yeah, he's pretty solid. Um Brandon Neely, he was our third round draft pick this year, right? Yep, third round draft pick. Um he's again one of those guys that didn't put up numbers in college baseball, but he um did pretty well at being able to um strike out a lot of guys and what am I trying to say here? Um, underneath the hood, he has a lot to be desired. Like his mechanics are pretty solid. And he's one of those guys that they drafted with the intention of tweaking him to see if they can kind of fix him. Because he's got a he's got a good frame to him. He's the type of guy that you you see as being able to maybe just take a big step forward. Um, so this next year is going to be really interesting for him because this was, again, one of those guys that, you know, he was drafted in the third round, but he was projected to be like a fifth or sixth round draft pick. So they picked him up pretty early um, with the intention of signing, you know, somebody like Conrad Kaysen, who um, they drafted in the eighth round and gave him a ton of extra money. Anyway, guys, um, so that was the top 30. Uh, hopefully that was somewhat interesting for you. Um and it made some sort of sense. There are a lot of other guys in here that are kind of interesting, like Brian Mata, he's been around forever. Bailey Horn, Grant Gambell, like we've seen a little bit of them. Um, but Brooks Brennan, this is probably the one guy down here that I'm, I'm actually pretty interested in. Um, he's a catching prospect, and some people were saying that he's got like a ton of power potential last year. He hasn't done amazing this year, but um, he's got like some sneaky skill sets. I think he could potentially have a big year and, and elevate his status. He's pretty young, so he might just be one of those prospects that kind of develops a little bit later from the catching side. But um, he was like a ninth round pick, and they signed him to quite a bit of money for a ninth round pick. So another one of those like overslot type guys. But um, that's kind of the video here. I think we're, I think we're just gonna call it a day. This has been pretty long. If you guys enjoyed this video, um, appreciate the like and subscribe. I mean, you, you got this far, you might as well hang around a little bit more. But uh, if not, I will see you around if my uh, videos ever pop up on your feed again. And thank you again for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye.